Hey everyone! So a while back, I did a review on the complete pile of dog shit known as the Line 6 Spider 2. And well, the reaction was pretty much typical when I start being just a little bit too honest. Most of you guys got it, a few people were butthurt, and then there was this particular gem. Heck, all of his mixes are shit, and his style of guitar tone does not feel heavy at all. But somehow he got a spider to sound the best out of all of them. 5150s, Rev, Bias, etc. Obviously, that guy loves his spider. Perhaps he should stay off the big bad internet and go back to his safe space, or someone else might say something he doesn't like. Wah, cry me a fucking river. Meanwhile, I got a lot of requests from you guys to review the pod. Now, we all know the original was fucking terrible. And I mean, just downright awful. Like Lou Reed with Metallica awful. We all know that, so I'm not gonna waste our time with it. Fortunately, my good buddy Chris Rafinski had a Pod HD kicking around and he was kind enough to lend it to me for a few weeks. So I got a chance to put it through its paces. Is it any good? Well, as I'm sure you guys have figured out by now, no guitar magazine on the planet is ever going to give you an honest answer to that question. You want the truth? Here it comes. Now, let's be clear here. I give every piece of gear I review a fair shake. If it's good, I'll say so. If it sucks, I'll say that too. The Pod HD is no different. I wanted to try it out and just see if it's usable or not. And I'm not talking about spend two weeks with it trying to wrangle a somewhat usable tone out of it with all kinds of post-processing <coughs> fluff. <laughs> what I mean is, if I plug it in, will it sound good? If I have to fuck with it for any length of time to get it to sound good, it's getting a thumbs down. I think amps should sound good just when you plug them in. Call me fucking crazy. Life is too short to waste it making shitty gear sound good. Just give me what I want and don't fuck with me in the process. Now, a few of you guys were a huge help in this review and you guys mailed me some of your presets. That is awesome and thank you so very much. I love the fact that you can share your presets among the user base. Definitely cuts down on the fucking run factor when it comes to trying to find a usable tone. And the Pod HD edit program for the PC is fairly straightforward and gives you very easy access to a lot of the functions. Extremely cool. I really like the fact that you can drag and drop presets right into the program. The fuck is this? Authorized model pack? Substitute models? All right, let's check out how to get the model. Are you fucking kidding me? 50 bucks to use this thing's full capability on a six year old Amsim? Are they huffing glue over at line six? I mean, wow, you can get access to the cloud for the positive grid stuff at like no extra charge. All kinds of user generated presets and Amsims, but not line six, apparently 50 fucking dollars. What a ripoff. This is not off to a good start. All right, so I got some of the user created presets installed. Let's go through a few. Bear in mind, all I really care about is the heavy tone and how good does it sound. Clean tones are far easier to simulate and that's not what I'm looking for in an amp sim. <laughs> Okay, not really the greatest sounding amp sim I've ever heard. Now I'll admit, I sort of liked it when I first plugged it in all on my own. I thought, okay, well, it's not as bad as the Spider. It's actually not half bad all on its own. And then I put it up against some other sims and then some real amps and realized, well, no, it's just really not that good. Now I'm sure a bunch of you guys are probably thinking, well, turn off the cabinet sims and use impulses. And that's a valid tactic for this thing. However, I'm reviewing the pod and not third-party impulses. Yes, third-party impulses sound infinitely better than the crap that comes stock on the pod. But if you're gonna go third-party, then why even bother with the pod? You can go full software with positive grid or read cabinet and get a huge selection of tones and they don't nickel and dime you to death if you want more tones. They're already included. And let's not forget, you actually can't load third-party impulses right into the pod. So if you're jamming with your band through a PA, you're pretty much fucked. 
All right, let's cut the bullshit. Here's how it sounds in a mix. Many thanks to my friends Chris Rafinski and Jimmy McKinnon for helping out on this one. And here's it up against a real Rev Generator 120. And here's the same riff uh, with positive grid bias simulating a 5150. Now, I would have loved to use the Pods 5150 simulator to compare it with, but that particular sound was behind a $50 paywall. So that's not gonna happen. I guess we just have to make do with second best for this review because I'm not giving Line 6 50 bucks just so they can disappoint me even more. All right, to be fair, here's all three clips right in a row. Now, before you guys start with the peripheries first album used a pod HD, uh, that's very true, but I'm not sure if they used an upgraded pod or a stock one, but I do know that those guys are far more talented than I. And let's be honest here, they're probably far more talented than most of us. Just because those guys got a passable tone out of it doesn't necessarily mean the rest of us will. If you want to put in some time and prove a point, go right ahead. You can find one of these used on eBay for about 200 to 250 bucks. But keep in mind, you might just have to shell additional cash on top of that because of those fucking insane paywalls. If you're looking for a better deal, there's much better to be had for less money. As it stands, I really can't give the Pod HD my approval. It's just not a good bang for the buck. These days, it's just too much money for a mediocre sound at best. However, I would still love to review the Helix in the future. I mean, Line 6 has to get it right eventually. <laughs> 